In this video, you'll learn how to draw ray diagrams for concave and convex mirrors. We'll start with a concave mirror. So this is a concave mirror, and you can imagine yourself kind of walking into a cave. And this is going to be the front part of our mirror. This is where we're going to put the object. And this is going to be the back uh, back side of our mirror. Next, we're going to shine three beams of light uh, parallel to what we call the optical axis. So this line right here is called the optical axis. And we're going to shine three beams of light, which is going to look like that. And notice how they bounce off the mirror. And they all will uh, reflect back towards this one point right here. And this point right here is called the focal point. And from this, we can come up with a general rule. Our first rule is going to be that if a ray, a light ray, is parallel to the optical axis, then it's going to reflect back through the focal point. And if it's going through the focal point, and we're going to kind of think of this in reverse, if you were to shine a light through the focal point, then it will bounce back and uh, it's going to be bounce back parallel uh, to our optical axis. One more thing to uh, notice here is that if you were to double the distance of the focal point, so this is the distance from the mirror to the focal point, um, this little f here, if you were to double that, you would get this location, which is going to be the center of curvature. What that means is if you were to extend this mirror all the way, extend it continuous, you know, continue to extend all, all the way as a circle, this would be the center of that circle. Now let's take a look at a convex mirror. In a convex mirror, if you were to shine light parallel to the optical axis, it's going to bounce off um, away from, uh, it's going to diverge, the rays will diverge away from each other. And if you were to extend these rays all the way back, you'll notice that they intersect on the back side of the mirror. And this point right here is called the uh, focal point, like just like we saw earlier. And But this time it's on the back side of the mirror. So the object here is on the left and the um, focal point is going to be on the right hand side on the back side of the mirror. Uh, so rule number one here if, is that if the ray is parallel, then the light will bounce off away from the focal point. So the difference here is it's going away from the focal point. And then rule number two is I'd like you to reverse that. So if a f light were going towards the going towards towards the focal point, then it's going to bounce off, uh, bounce back parallel to the axis. Ray diagrams can be very helpful because they allow us to predict the location of the image and also the characteristics of the image. So we're going to start with an object beyond C, beyond the center of curvature location. And uh, we're going to, I'm going to take a look at the red line first. So we have this red line that's going parallel to the optical axis. It reflects off this concave mirror and then goes through the focal point. And then the blue line goes through the focal point and then bounces back parallel to the optical axis. And we'll notice that the location is between C and F, and the characteristics are real, which means that it is, uh, if you were to place a piece of paper here, and let's say that white arrow were a light bulb or a candle, and if you place a sheet of paper at this location where the yellow arrow is, that you would get an image there, and that the rays are actually um, approaching that location right there. So there really are rays that are actually hitting um, that location where that image is. Uh, the next characteristic is that it's inverted. And by inverted, we mean that initially the arrow was pointing up and now it's flipped. Now it's pointing down. That's why we say it's inverted and that the image is smaller. What we mean by that is that the size of the image, it's not as tall or as big as it was before. So it's it's a it's a smaller size of the of the original object. Now let's take a look at a situation where the object is at the center of curvature. So when it's at the center of curvature, once again our red line is parallel to optical axis, goes through the focal point. The blue line goes through the focal point, is parallel to the optical axis, and we notice that our uh, image is at location C, which is the center of curvature. 
the image here is once again real and it is meaning that if we put a piece of paper there we would get an image on that sheet of paper uh, it is inverted meaning it's upside down it's flipped and it's the same size now we're going to take a look at a situation where the object is between C and F and here once again the red line is uh, parallel to optical axis bounces off through the focal point the blue line goes through the focal point parallel to optical axis and the location of our image here is going to be beyond C the characteristics here is that it is real once again I could put a sheet of paper at that location and get an image the image is inverted it's upside down and it is going to be larger than the original object. Now we're going to take a look at a situation where the object is at the focal point. So we have our uh, red line here going uh, towards the uh, mirror. It's going to bounce. It's going to go parallel to the to the optical axis. It's going to bounce off and go through the focal point. Now for the uh, second ray, we can't draw it through the focal point because it's on the focal point. So what we can do is we can have that uh, light. Uh, we can draw a light ray that hits the um, the mirror where it hits the where it's intersecting the optical axis right in the middle of this mirror here, and it will bounce off because of the uh, angle because it's a mirror, and so the angle of incidence will equal the angle of reflection. Um, so this angle right here has to equal this angle. Uh, we can we can kind of magnify this right this area right there. Imagine that we're magnifying. Uh, that we have this light that's hitting it and bouncing off and if you have light hitting a plane mirror it's going to bounce off at the same angle and so this is just going to bounce off at the same angle and you'll notice that these two rays um, they never intersect uh, so there is no image in this situation so no image now we're going to take a look at a situation where the object is between the focal point and the mirror and once again, our, our red light here, red ray here, is going to go parallel to optical axis, and it's going to reflect off and go through the focal point. Uh, and the uh, blue line here will represent the ray that goes uh, through the focal point. But in this case, the focal point is behind uh, the object. But we could still imagine that if we had a ray that went through the focal point and along this direction, once it hits the um, mirror, it's going to bounce off parallel and you'll notice that these two rays the red and the blue they diverge they, they they're not going to converge they're not going to intersect so in this situation we're going to extend the the rays the reflected rays extend them back and you'll so you can see that with the dotted lines and that forms an image behind the mirror and so uh, the location of this is going to be between F and C and the characteristic here is that first of all it's going to be a virtual virtual image. Now if I put a piece of paper um, at this location where the yellow arrow is, yellow dot arrow is, I would not get an image. And that would make sense because this is a mirror. In a mirror, light cannot go through a mirror. It bounces back. Uh, so this is a virtual image. Uh, it is upright, which means it's still pointing up. It was pointing up before. It's still pointing up. And that it is larger. The image is larger than the object. Now we'll take a look at a convex mirror, and in a convex mirror, uh, we have uh, our ray, our red ray here. It's going parallel to optical axis, and it's going to reflect away from the focal point. And our blue ray here is going to go towards the focal point and reflect uh, parallel to the optical axis. And notice once again these two are diverging. And so I'm going to extend the reflected rays back. And where they intersect, that's where my image is going to be. Uh, for the image here, the location is going to be between F and the mirror. The characteristic of this image is that it is virtual which means that if I put a piece of paper um, where that image is, uh, I'm not going to actually get an image. I'm not going to see anything there. There's no light going there because this is a mirror and light will bounce off the mirror. It's going to bounce back off back to the same side of the mirror. The image you'll notice is upright, which means that it was pointing the objects point up. The image is also pointing up and it's going to be smaller than the object. In the next video, you'll learn how to solve mathematical problems for concave and convex mirrors.